uproar in the international community. They say they support Palestine, but they only do to a certain extent. Kaplan News shows how many in Spain are protesting the Israel-Hamas war. Marco Rubio helping his former political rival Donald Trump. And I don't think any of us believe Joe Biden should be president. Prepare for the first presidential debate. And rekindled relations. As Russian naval vessels depart after a week in Havana. These stories and more coming up on News Friday. Hello, South Florida. I'm Benjamin Cure. And I'm Emma Alonso. Today is Tuesday, June 18, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. Florida funnel, a tornado touching down near Tampa and causing major damage. This morning, an aftermath of cleanup following a hefty tornado that hit Citrus County over the weekend. The storm developed Sunday night and was caught on camera in the process of destroying two homes in the area. Homeowners who enjoyed the town for its proximity to the sea saw a water spout turn into a twister ravage through the town, leaving those affected with the tall task of recovery. We came out first light this morning. Well, I was devastated, of course. Uh, put a lot of time and, and uh, effort and uh, a lot of belly laughs at this place. Officials reported no injuries as citizens continue cleanup operations. New this morning, demolition are on deck following a massive apartment fire and shooting in downtown Miami. Following last Monday's fire, the building at Northwest 3rd Street and 4th Avenue must be demolished. This is because of imminent collapse risk. That demolition started this morning and residents are not allowed to retrieve their belongings. There was also shooting inside one of the apartments. In addition to college campus protests here in the United States, there's also outrage overseas this morning. Kaplan News reporter Jacqueline Pecker saw some of it firsthand while studying abroad in Sevilla, Spain. While protests against the war in Gaza are on the rise in Florida and many other cities across the United States, the University of Sevilla in Spain sees a different reality. The situation is different, but the demands from students remain the same for the university to cut ties with Israel. <laughs> This was the scene at the University of Sevilla last month, an encampment of students protesting at the entrance to the Faculty of Geography and History campus. Unlike the same type of encampments organized by university students throughout the United States, in Sevilla, the police intervention was minimal, almost imperceptible. <laughs> students at the University of Sevilla have been protesting for several weeks against university authorities for the academic and research relations they maintain with universities in Israel. We know that there is an agreement for arms research, as well as an agreement for railway and construction research. For what? To build the state of Israel on the ruins of Palestine. The students had taken over the main entrance of the university with tents, where in addition to placing flags expressing their discontent with the war and Israel's actions, they also called on the University of Sevilla to address their demands. They say they support Palestine, but they only do to a certain extent. Recently, the administration issued a statement announcing that they have temporarily suspended some academic relations and research projects with institutions in Israel. Students from Palestine U.S., the organization leading the protests, say they are not satisfied with this decision. We still want the university to break all relations with all academic institutions in Israel and all the companies that are financing this genocide. Dr. Concha Langa Nuno, a professor at the university, expresses that the protests have awakened a much needed passion for social justice among students. Students should always be fighters and dreamers. In European and Spanish universities in recent years, students have not been very active in these scenarios, so in this sense, it's positive. University of Sevilla students say they are willing to dedicate the necessary time until the institution makes the changes they demand and what they consider support for Israel is completely suspended. From Sevilla, Spain, Jacqueline Pecker for Kaplan News. Police are investigating an incident this morning that they deem a hate crime against a local bagel shop in downtown. Footage shown to the Miami Police Department shows that the suspect wrote Free Palestine over an Israeli flag hanging outside of a Holy Bagels and Pizzeria as a form of protest to the nation's war in Gaza. Mayor Francis Suarez and federal judge were seen outside the shop yesterday helping him clean up graffiti. From being called Little Marco on the 2016 presidential stage by eventual President Donald Trump to now being one of his closest political allies. This morning, Florida Senator Marco Rubio is helping Trump prepare for his first presidential debate against Joe Biden next week. CNN's Randy Kay has more on the story. You have Little Marco Rubio. During the 2016 campaign, one of Donald Trump's favorite targets 
Republican Senator Marco Rubio. This little guy has lied so much we go. about my record. There we go. The person he has lied so much about my record. Now that same Marco Rubio is helping Trump prepare for the upcoming CNN debate against President Joe Biden. He has really large ears, the biggest ears I've ever seen. For a while, Rubio put up with Trump's attacks in 2016, then decided to go on the attack, mocking the size of Trump's hands. He's like 6'2", which is why I don't understand why his hands are the size of someone who's 5'2". And you know what they say about men with small hands? You can't trust them. Trump pushed back during this Fox News Republican debate. He hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Rubio wasn't just Trump's punching bag. At this Republican debate in New Hampshire in 2016, Chris Christie painted Rubio as a robot programmed with lines from his own debate prep about what he considered Obama's liberal agenda. And let's dispel once and for all with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. That's what Washington, D.C. does. The drive-by shot at the beginning with incorrect and incomplete information and then the memorized 25-second speech that is exactly what his advisors gave him. Even after that, Rubio repeated the so-called canned line again. Here's the bottom line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is. The memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's there the it reason is, everybody. why this campaign is so important. Because I think this notion, I, I think this is an important point. See, Marco, Marco, the thing is this. When you're president of the United States, when you're a governor of a state, the, the memorized 30-second speech where you talk about how great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. Three days after that debate was the New Hampshire primary on February 9th, 2016. Rubio finished in fifth place, almost 25 points behind Trump. At the time, Rubio cited his own debate performance. Our disappointment tonight is not on you. It's on me. It's on me. I did not... I did not do well on Saturday night, so listen to this. That will never happen again. Yet last year, when Christie jumped into the 2024 presidential race, Rubio was quick to dispel the notion that Christie played a role in his failed 2016 campaign. Any political reporter, commentator claiming Christie ended my campaign in 2016 is lazy or dumb. New Hampshire debate sucked because instead of hitting back when attacked like I wanted to, I listened to advice about pivoting and not punching down on a Chris Christie who was at 7% and about to drop out, but it didn't end my campaign. And while there are both good and bad flyers in every state, some areas may have more considerate airline passengers than others, and Florida is not on that list. According to a new survey by gaming company Solitaire Bliss, Florida had the most considerate travelers, while Iowa had the worst travel etiquette, followed by Illinois, Virginia, Texas, and Georgia. Inconsiderate behaviors including reclining airplane seats without asking, using phones loudly in the terminal, and placing bags on terminal seats. Marlins fans get three free frames of baseball as the Fish take their game into the 12th inning. That's still ahead, and so is the story. This morning, for anyone who was nervous about how close Russian warships were to South Florida, Newsbreak will be back in two minutes.
Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator is the velocity accompanying the fellow's rudder, as in a boat. Unless there is movement or action, the planned direction is of little consequence. We encourage the creative ideas into action, and from the experience of doing, we critically assess the feedback, adjust, and set out to rediscover the potentialities of an entrepreneurial mindset. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Shipping out, cameras rolling as Russian warships docked in Cuba head back out to sea. The Russian-powered submarine Kazan has left Havana this morning after a week-long visit that both governments say was simply due to, quote, historically friendly, friendly relations. Among the ships brought along with the Kazan was the Admiral Gorshkov, which is one of the most modern warships in President Vladimir Putin's Navy. Russian diplomats allowed Cubans to board and visit the ship off of the coast of Havana. CNN's Havana correspondent Patrick Offman was able to get on and tour it. We're going to get in line and see if we're able to get aboard. Privyet. Privyet. According to Oppen, they were only allowed to see the main deck and Russian officials tracked their every move. Both Cuban and Russian officials say that the visit of off the four Russian ships, the largest Russian convoy to Cuba in years, is not a threat to the U.S. The Miami Marlins lost a heartbreaker to the St. Louis Cardinals last night. The game went to extra innings, but the Cardinals won 7-6 after a two-run homer by Masin Nguyen in the 12th inning. The Marlins nearly tied it, but Dylan Carlson threw out the potential tying run at the plate. Miami now has six straight losses. Final score for Cardinal 7, Marlin 6. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. See us dream, see us remember, see us protest. You matter, your feelings matter, your identity matters, everything about who you are matters. See us fight back, see us rebuild, see us shatter stereotypes, see us inspire, see us united, see us now. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. That's all the time we have for news break. I'm Emma Alonso. I'm Benjamin Cure. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.